So, Kendall, give us some sense of how the two guys taking the majority of the reps, how they're grasping the offense, you know, how long does that take, the install, things of that nature. Yeah, I think Josh and Chandler have done a really good job. Uh, both the guys have been, they're very eager, you know, they, they both understand that there's a position that's open and, and they will both want it. So, uh, they're doing everything extra that they can. They're wanting to come up here and, and meet extra. So, they're both really hungry. and. Um, you know, they enjoy what we're doing right now in the process of working and installing a new offense. So I think they've done a really good job. We've tried to tailor everything from an installation standpoint to their um, kind of their style, what fits them the best. And um, I think they've done a really good job. They've done a nice job leading as well. Um, you know, obviously what Max has done from a leadership standpoint um, and, and that void being there. So those guys trying to fill that void and uh, come out there and compete every day and try to lead the right way. So they've done a nice job. Was Josh's high school offense at all similar? Very. Yeah, very. So he played for Mike Spradlin, um, who was at the University of Houston and been around our offense and our system. So, yeah, Josh, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is not foreign to him, foreign to him. But, you know, every time you go to a different place, you pick up different things, you adapt. And, um, you know, our offense is similar in some regards, but different in others. So uh, he's done a nice job of uh, adapting to it. Well, how did Matthew just adjust to Fort Worth being your family? Oh, it's been great. You know, I grew up 60 miles from here, so I uh, know Fort Worth well and uh, got my family here. I don't waste any time getting my family if I, if I take a new job. So got them here, get them involved in spring sports, and um, everybody's adjusted really well. So uh, the Fort Worth community is it's just a great community. It, you know, it's got the big city feel, but it's a small town. You know, it just feels that way. And, um, yeah, it's been really good with adjusting here. Can you take us back to when – TCU first reached out to you and just kind of gauged your interest in, in coming here and being the OC. Can you kind of talk about that process? Yeah, um, you know, really it happened pretty quick. Um, you know, they had got done playing, I guess. That's when, you know, Garrett had left. And, um, you know, was reached out to. Obviously, I know several guys on staff here and knew that that, that was happening and uh, reached out to me. and. You know, it took three or four days until Coach Dykes and I talked on the phone. And, you know, once that happened, it got pretty serious pretty quick. And I knew that it was a job that I wanted. Um, if I had the opportunity to have it, you know, with the direction of this program and being in the state of Texas and being close to home. So um, it was definitely something that I was very interested in. And um, I just, you know, feel grateful and blessed that I'm, I'm back here in the state and excited to get to work for Coach Dykes. Kendall, you talked about a minute ago, you try to get your family where you are as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's been a few moves in the last few years. How's yep. it been for you to have to, I know you were at Arkansas for three years, but how's it been kind of jumping around as much? And how much do you look forward to maybe setting some roots a little bit more? Yeah, I, I, I look forward to it a lot. You know, it's hard, you know. Um, it's hard for your kids to have to adjust. You know, in Arkansas and in, in Northwest Arkansas, if you've ever been there, it's, it's, it's an awesome place. And we, we really loved it. The university treated us well and um, would like to stay there for a long time. Just felt like this opportunity was too good to pass up. Uh, but yeah, it's hard, you know. The kids have great friends. You know, for me being at that place for three years, that's, you know, you hate to say it, but in the coaching business, sometimes that's that's a long stint, you know. Um, so didn't want to leave, didn't, didn't have to leave. Um, but, you know, my kids are pretty resilient, you know. Um, and they understand the process. And we have open conversations with, you know, my job and what we're doing. And so they, they understand all that, you know, they've grown up with this and, um, you know, they're, they're excited to be back home, you know, grandparents, you know, right around the corner. My sister lives in Dallas and, and just a lot of people that we know from this area. So we've already connected and, and it's been really good. And, you know, luckily that they, you know, support everything that we're doing and the decisions that we make. And your track record speaks for itself. Say again. Your track record speaks for itself. Just for TCU fans, what can they expect, I guess, stylistically from your offense this season? Um, stylistically, you know, I would say production. I, you know, I don't really care. You know, people put, you know, talk about putting your stamp on the program or, or all of that. You know, winning football games is what it's all about. You know, I don't care if we win three to two. Um, you know, obviously we expect to be really good on offense, um, but we, we want to be able to be a productive offense. Um, and however we do that, you know, taking advantage of what the defense gives us, whether that's running the ball, throwing the ball, um, you know, I really don't care. Um, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, it's about winning the football game. Um, we're going to play with tempo. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to run the football. And we're going to take shots down the field. So however those things happen in which order, uh, as long as it counts to us having more than them, we're good. People get 
caught up on titles like air raid and things of that nature. How much of the air raid is in your offense? The the pure air raid stuff that might be not a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a little bit. Um, you know, from when my dad coached with Mike right. back in 2000, uh, there's a little bit that's in there, but there's not a whole lot that's left. But um, you know, everybody's got a little bit, you know, of, of something in their offense, and if it fits, then it's something we'll we'll run. And if it doesn't fit our personnel, we don't feel like it's going to help us win. Then it's it's not something that we're going to go after. One of the first things that Sonny said when he got here last year was the athletes a little bit better than what he expected. What, what's kind of been your impression of the guys that you have on offense, being, being around them for a couple months now? Yeah, um, probably the most thing that I've been impressed with is just their mindset. And I think that starts with obviously the culture that Coach Dykes has said and then Kos Kazadi in the weight room with winter conditioning. And, you know, I knew that taking the job, what kind of mindset that the team was going to have with with these two guys here. So, you know, um, we, we are really athletic, I think. Um, you know, our depth is, is not where it probably needs to be from an outside receiver standpoint. Inside receivers, I think we got really good depth and really good athletes. Um, tight end position is good, running back position is good. And um, the thing that, that we also have is really good football coaches. You know, not just the full-time guys, but the support staff that's in place here. And then uh, Mike and Mark, two guys that I brought from Arkansas, they're here. Um, I feel like we got a really good coaching staff. so that. That always helps with the transition and with the installation, but um, I feel like the mindset, the eagerness of everybody, you know, on the football team, not just offensively, is where it should be. You know, whenever you have a very successful season and you got uh, really good coaches, coaches with really good culture. You know, obviously, I know you were here with Chandler last year, but you know, I know he's competing for a job. But when you look at a guy who was a starter going into last year gets hurt and then loses the job only because the guy has a phenomenal season, what do you see in Chandler as a guy who? kind of motivated and wanted to come back and do what do what he was set to do last year. Yeah, he's he's in the proven mindset right now, you know. Um, probably felt like it slipped away from him last year. I believe he got injured against Colorado, which gave, you know, Max the ability to go in there and, you know, if you get your opportunity to make the most of it, and Max did. So obviously he watched and I'm sure was a great teammate just knowing the guy that I've been around for the last two months, but um, I'm super excited to work with him. He's got he's got a great mindset. Like I said, he's he's wanting to prove, um, you know, not just to his teammates and himself, but I think probably to the general public that he can be the guy to run this program. Um, and he's he's going out there every day and, and working like um, that. It's his job to go get. So he he definitely doesn't feel like it's his. He's going to try to win it every day. Do you know Chad two more questions. Well? Do you know Chad very well? Is it Chad? I met him for the first time uh, last Saturday. Oh really? Yep. Yeah, him and his, uh, his wife. Pimble, you, you like to play fast. Coach Dyke likes to play fast. Is there a point where it's too fast? Like, can it be too fast, or is there no no limit? Like three and a half too fast? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. We don't like those yeah, at right, all. Right. Um, but tempo-wise, I mean, it, it, is there a point where you, where you will even say, okay, let's back off the gas a little bit here? Yeah, I mean, if we got a lead and it's in the fourth quarter and we need to control the game and keep our defense off the field, if they just went out there and, you know, went through a 11 play drive, you know, all those things um, from a coaching standpoint, from a team standpoint, um, you have to take into account, you know. So, yes, we want to play with tempo and everything's going to start with tempo. But obviously, I'm, I'm watching the football game and seeing, you know, what's happening. So there's different ways you know, we can disguise tempo by slowing it down, by shifts and motions and huddles and doing different things where when we approach the line, it, it still has a tempo feel to the defense because we don't just line up forever and show them exactly what we're doing. Uh, so there's there's ways to, to be able to mask that as well. But yeah, I mean, everything from an installation standpoint right now is getting them to play as fast as they can, knowing that when we get, uh, even tomorrow, if we have officials out there tomorrow, it's not gonna be as fast as we're practicing right now. It's just not, those guys are gonna have to get the ball inside. They're gonna hold us a little bit, make sure that the officials are set, get out. So it's gonna slow down. And But if you can go out there and practice it this way, and then everything gets to slow down. It makes it easier to process and see signals and, and know where to get lined up. Um, so yeah, the game will naturally slow itself down once you get on the field. How many? Oh, last one. Go ahead. From an installation standpoint, is it is it easier when you have all these new faces, like everybody grows, like learning together, or is it a little bit more difficult because you don't have um, Naz guys like Quentin and Kendra and those experienced guys? Uh, it's hard to tell. You know, um, I've had to. You know, I've installed at several different places and. Different people learn differently. Um, you know, 
know, some of the new guys that are in, you know, to their advantage, the older guys aren't ahead of them, you know, because it is a new offense. So I don't think there's um, a secret sauce to how you do it. I mean, the main thing that we try to do, and we and we have, is we put a lot on them. Um, and we've done that by design. We want them to go fail. Um, because now they, they've seen it all. We're, we're continuing to install one, install more next week, but we're going to keep putting a lot on them. So whenever we have summer and these guys have their player-led workouts, they'll have seen the things that, that we've run in the spring. We'll have the tape to be able to back that up. And then once we get into fall camp, it should be recall instead of having new stuff. And so try to do that by design so they got something that they can pull from. Okay, thanks, Coach.